So you're interested in learning everything there is to know about filing Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois. Well, thankfully, you've actually come to the right place. So let's get right into it. Welcome to the Ascend Finance YouTube channel, where we help folks understand the cost and qualification for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois. We built actually a free Chapter 7 bankruptcy calculator so that you can actually estimate the cost and qualification, including the pros and cons, to filing a Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois. Now, regardless of where you live in Illinois specifically, we actually ask for your zip code. So all the data and results should be based on your specific location. Now, today I'm gonna to cover a few things. First, the cost to file Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois. Second, how to qualify for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois. Third, are your assets protected if you file Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois? And then fourth and finally, one of the most popular question is, should you file Chapter 7 bankruptcy in Illinois? Now, remember though that this video is for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice. Now, as I'm sure you're trying to research as much as you can right now, let's make this short and sweet by going right into the first thing, how much it costs to file bankruptcy in Illinois. When it comes to filing Chapter 7 bankruptcy, there are several factors an attorney may consider in estimating a total all-in estimate to file. To clarify though, here's what an attorney actually may look at when they're trying to determine how much they may charge someone. So first, they may look at the complexity of the case. Second, the urgency for that person to file. Third, um, the kind of the years of experience for that attorney. Fourth, the, the actual cash flow of the client. So sometimes attorneys may be a little bit more flexible if they don't have as much money to pay or the income's lower. And then five, location. Um, so I kind of want to kind of further go into each one real quick so we can kind of explain them. So first, complex of the case, right? So this generally is going to refer to whether or not you have any assets you like protected um, when you file. So if the client ends up having assets, it may take the attorney longer to kind of get the petition ready. So for urgency to file, you know, whether you may have to file bankruptcy within a few days or months, an attorney may charge more or less depending on how much time they have to get it ready. And then attorney's years of experience, right? So this is going to be more, a little bit more straightforward. So if an attorney has been filing bankruptcies for more than 10 years versus someone that just started a year ago, they may actually be able to charge a bit more, um, but it really depends. And then fourth, the the cash flow of the, the individual filing. So sometimes they may charge a smaller fee as a courtesy, still the average fee is usually charged regardless of the client's cash flow. Now, finally, the, the location. So this is actually more relative state versus state, as actually some states may have an average set chapter seven fee of, let's say $2,000 versus another state with an average of 1,200. Okay, so before I move on to the next part about kind of qualifying for chapter seven, if, if you actually wanna have an estimate for the total all-in cost, you can take our free chapter seven calculator below. It, it's You don't even have to add an email address to see the results. Um, the idea is it gives you the cost, pros and cons, and whether you actually may qualify for a chapter seven. Keep in mind, if you don't want to add any contact info, you can just select none of the above at the end, um, and you don't even have to add an email address. All right, so now let's dive in how to actually qualify for a chapter seven. So there's gonna be three main factors to understand when determining your ability to file chapter seven income, expenses, assets. So those are gonna be the three things I want you to remember when trying to understand qualification. So each state is gonna have most likely an income limit set for your household size. So what that's gonna be considered is the means test income limit. I'll actually put the income limit for this state on the screen, but, but keep in mind that the means test updates every so often. So that being said, you know, taking our free calculator that's actually in the description can be helpful as it's actually gonna be most up to date with the means test data for estimating your qualification for chapter seven. Alrighty, so now let's talk about expenses as the means test has a couple of parts. The first part of the means test is mainly considering your gross income versus the income limit for the household size. Now, the second part generally considers your disposable income. Sometimes individuals may fail the first part of the means test by making too much money, but sometimes pass the second part because the court finds they may not actually have enough disposable income. And so when that's the case, you may find that you can qualify for a seven even though you make more than the income limit. Now, finally, let's talk about how assets are actually really important to, to the chapter seven decision-making process. So although having assets may not impact your qualification, it may actually impact your decision to file. Almost every state has its own exemptions that filers can use. So they may wanna utilize that to protect their assets from being liquidated. Now, the main assets I'd say that individuals are mainly concerned about are their home, 
or their cars. So let me kind of explain how that looks like it. Now, before I dive deeper into that and how they're all treated, I, I just wanted to say like, if the video is end up being helpful or if you think it could be, you know, a game changer for someone you know, let's light up that like button below. It seems that YouTube tends to rank videos with more likes and we like to think that our video can help those dealing with this kind of st stressful topic. So let's make it go viral and create a positive impact. Now that we've covered how the assets may impact chapter seven from, from a high level, uh, let's dive into the more of like how it all works. So there are what I'm gonna call the two E's that can actually help you estimate the risk of you losing your asset when filing chapter seven bankruptcy in Illinois. So the first E is equity and the second E is exemptions. So remember when you think of the two E's, it's equity and exemptions. And those are ideally gonna help you understand whether your assets are protected in a chapter seven. One of the most common assets individuals are concerned about is losing their home. So let's use that for this example. So at the time of the video, I believe the estimated homestead exemption for Illinois is right, $15,000 for single folks that, that are under 65 years old. So I'll actually add a link in the description below come with an article covering the most up-to-date information on the homestead exemption for Illinois. But in this case, let's, let's use the 15,000. So let's say you have less equity than the estimated homestead exemption of 15,000. Well, then it actually may be protected if you file chapter seven. Now, on the other hand, if you have 50,000, dollars more than the homestead exemption for Illinois, then it may be at risk of being sold during the chapter seven process. So what happens if you have more equity than the state exemption, but you don't want to lose your home? Well, it, it mostly comes down to your decision, but there may be a few other options to consider. Um, I actually dive into each alternative in some of my other videos. However, if you don't have time to watch more videos, you can actually just take our general debt options calculator linked in the description as well, which will break down the cost, duration, pros and cons of you know bankruptcy, including alternatives. Okay. One of the more popular questions is, should you file chapter seven bankruptcy in Illinois? Here's my answer to that. Everyone's situation is unique. And of course the answer is gonna be up to you, but if you're finding yourself either at a spot where you may have too much equity in a specific asset that could be at risk of being sold in a seven, or let's say B, you're you're not sure whether chapter seven is even right for you, then what I'd say is, you know, you can take our chapter seven calculator below it. It's free and it's gonna help you estimate the cost and qualification in Illinois. That said though, if you don't really have a lot of time right now to fill out a calculator or not really feeling like that you'd want to, uh, you're actually welcome just to call us directly at 833 272 Three six three one, and we'll try to answer all your questions over the phone, um, and we can try to help you understand the risk of losing assets, chapter seven qualification, pros and cons, and even alternative options so you can make the most informed decision. Now, thank you so much for watching, and I definitely hope you're able to get out of debt cheaper, easier, and faster. Take care.